Hello and welcome to St. Cecilia's. Missalettes with the hymns and prayers of the Mass are found in the pews, and we ask you to please silence your cell phones. The Mass today is offered for the intentions of Wilfred Richard. Please stand as the Lord gathers us to his cross for the celebration of these sacred mysteries. Let us together sing our entrance hymn number 39 in the Breaking Bread Missal, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 39. the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we prepare to celebrate these most sacred mysteries of the Mass, let us call to mind our own sins and ask God for pardon and peace. You came into the world for our salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You remain with us today by the grace of your Spirit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We know, Lord, that you will come again in glory. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity. Enable us, as we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exult. The steep will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them, the splendor of the Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble. Make firm the knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication, with divine recompense. He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, 
the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag, then the tongue of the mute will sing. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. They will meet with joy and gladness, sorrow and mourning will flee. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. James. Be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and late rains. You too must be patient. Make your hearts firm, because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory. 
when John the Baptist heard in prison of the works of the Christ, he sent his disciples to Jesus with this question. Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. As they were going off, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing. Those who wear fine clothing are in royal palaces. Then what did you go out to see? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it was written, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening again. It's the third week of Advent, Gaudaute Sunday. It means rejoice, the Savior is coming, and that's why the rose-colored vestment, this is not pink, this is rose-colored, as the third candle is lit. But you're greater than John. We are greater than John. And much is expected of us. You know, years ago, H.G. Uh, Wells, a famous British historian, wanted to select the three greatest men in history. The first thing H.G. Wells did was to decide upon a test, a standard for determining what made a person great. After thinking over the matter, he came up with a test, and he put it in the form of a question. What did the person do to start people thinking in new directions in a way that eventually would change history? Using this test, Wells considered a number of candidates. Finally, he narrowed it down to three. He gave third place to Aristotle, the great Greek philosopher. He gave the second place to Buddha, the great Eastern mystic. He gave the first place to Jesus of Nazareth. In giving first place to Jesus, Wells said he considered Jesus solely as a man. He said he was aware that many people considered Jesus to be the Son of God and to be more than a man. But as a historian, he had to disregard this fact. He must judge Jesus as a man, just as a painter must paint him as a man. And least people think he was biased in choosing Jesus, Wells pointed out that he himself was not a Christian or a believer. After reading Wells' article, someone said, I wonder who Jesus would have selected had he been in Wells' place. Well, strangely enough, Jesus did make a selection in his lifetime. 
And who did Jesus select as history's greatest man? We find the answer in today's gospel. He selected John the Baptist, saying, I say unto you, among those born of woman, there is none greater than John the Baptist. I often thought of John the Baptist as a combination of General Patton uh, and a football coach I once had. He was formidable, he was holy, and he was clear. If Jesus were to remake that selection today, I'm sure he would pick John, Bapt John the Baptist again. A closer study of today's gospel reading suggests two reasons why Jesus chose John. The first was his personal holiness. Jesus, John's whole life was one of selflessness and self-sacrifice. The second reason is the role John played in the history of salvation. John was much more than just an outstanding prophet. He was God's own personal messenger, sent to the, prepare the world for the coming of Jesus. And after declaring John to be the greatest man who ever lived, Jesus surprises us. In fact, he kind of shocks us, saying, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Now let's be perfectly clear on what Jesus is saying. He's saying that the greatest sinner among us in this church tonight is greater than John. He's saying the least important member of God's kingdom is greater than the greatest man in history. He's saying that by our acceptance of him, which makes us members of God's kingdom, we take on a value that ranks above the most important person who ever lived. The reason for this is clear. By our acceptance of Jesus Christ, we are united with him. And by our acceptance of Jesus Christ, we become one with him. By our acceptance of Jesus Christ, we become members of his mystical body, the church, the kingdom of God on earth. As a result, we are so joined, so intimately with Jesus, that we can truly address God as our Father. I think an analogy might help clarify how the least member of God's kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. Consider this example. The weakest voice in the world when you're united to a microphone is louder than the loudest voice in the world. So too, the slowest person in the world when united to an automobile is faster than the fastest person in the world. In a similar way, the least important person in the world when united to Jesus becomes greater than the greatest person in the world. And so today, in the readings, pay tribute to John but they also pay tribute to you. They say that John is the greatest man in history, but they also say that the least member of God's kingdom is greater than John. In making us one with his son, Jesus, God, has bestowed on us the greatest of gifts. And because God has given us such a great gift, he expects much from us, just as he expected much from John. Jesus himself said in his lifetime, much will be required of a person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of a person entrusted with more. One of the purposes of Advent is to ask ourselves three hard questions about how we are using God's gifts. How well are we using God's gifts to grow in holiness to advance the work of God's kingdom on earth? How might we better use God's gift to grow in holiness and to advance the work of God's kingdom on earth? How will we begin to use God's gifts starting tonight to grow in holiness and to advance the work of the kingdom on earth? In brief then, we should ask ourselves, how are we using God's gifts? How much better could we use them? How will we begin to use them starting right now? And finally, we pray tonight, Lord, 
John the Baptist was your messenger who prepared this world for your coming, for your first coming. Help us to carry out our mission of preparing our world for your second coming. Help us to evaluate how we are using your gifts to grow in holiness and to advance the work of your kingdom. Help us to take to heart Jesus' word that much will be required of a person entrusted with much. For we know we can advance your kingdom because you truly are the light of the world and the way and the truth and the life. Let us stand for our profession of faith. I believe God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, he incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now bring our knees before the Father, trusting that with his eyes of faith we can see wonders. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church, that we may never hesitate to proclaim the good news in the face of conflict, poverty, and despair. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our leaders in government that they may respond to the voices of the voiceless, the poor, the homeless, the marginalized, the imprisoned, the unborn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that we may embrace the message of Our Lady of Guadalupe, patroness of the Americas and work to bring together people of different cultures and languages. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that this Advent wreath that we light each week constantly remind us to prepare for the coming of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died recently. And at this Mass we pray for the repose of the soul of Wilfred Richard. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of beauty and wonder, give us eyes of faith to see your beauty and wonder in the world you created and in the children you call your own. Hear this in all of our prayers through the one we joyously await, Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. Please be seated.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold of him, the Virgin Mother longed for him, and with love beyond all telling, John the Baptist sang of his coming, and he proclaimed his presence when at last he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that we may, he may find us waiting and watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with the angels and the archangels, with the thrones and the dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the great hymn of your glory as without end we all acclaim. <laughs> Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Story of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout all the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially Wilfred, and all who have died in your mercy and love. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Cecilia, and with all of your saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we too may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy and love, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other some sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under me. But say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ keep us all safe for eternal life.
desert and dry land will grow green in praise. Clay will rejoice with full bloom. Showers of flowers given birth in dead earth. In colors they echo his song. Come, O oh Lord, and set us free. Maranatha, come, O oh Lord, and set us free. Maranatha, strengthen the hearts of the fearful and weak. Be strong, fear not. God is near, coming in power. Loosing our bonds, setting the captives free. Come, O oh Lord, and set us free. Maranatha. Come, O oh Lord, and set us free. Maranatha. We have been waiting and longing for light, watching for signs of the Lord. Promised of ages, Messiah to come. Hear us, we beg you, come save. Come, O oh Lord, and set us free. Maranatha, come, O oh Lord, and set us free. Maranatha, Lord, make us turn to you. Show us your face. We shall be saved by your sight. You are the potter and we are the clay. We are the work of your hand. Come, O oh Lord, and set us free. Maranatha. Come, O oh Lord, and set us free. Maranatha. Kindness and truth shall meet when the Lord comes. Justice and peace shall embrace. Truth shall come springing from out of the earth. Justice will reign from above. Come, O oh Lord, and set us free. Maranatha. Come, O oh Lord, and set us free. Maranatha. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, O Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of all of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. The deadlines for Christmas meat pie orders is this coming Monday, December 12th. If you haven't gotten your order form in yet, don't delay and miss out. We are happy to announce that St. Cecilia's will once again have a Christmas pageant next Sunday, the 18th, at the end of the 1115 Mass. We invite you to join us. 
to stop and reflect on the love and the joy that Advent calls us to recognize in the coming of our Lord and the splendor of the Christmas season. And there is also a deadline approaching for the return of the gifts for our parish giving tree. The response to our tree this year has been tremendous and we thank you for your generosity. As a reminder, unwrapped gifts with the tags attached must be returned by next Sunday so we have time to distribute them for Christmas. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads for God's blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his second coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in your faith, joyful in your hope, and active in your charity. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Let us sing our recessional hymn, number 63, In Breaking Bread, Ready the Way, number 63. Hey!